Shri Ajay Singham, Director of Fcon Techniques Private Limited. Shri Singham, Director of Fcon Techniques Private Limited and Rockland Private Limited, Group Company of RCR Industrial Flooring, SARL. Fcon Techniques Private Limited is India's leading floor solutions company and international member of uh, Association of Concrete Industrial Flooring Contractors. UK Rockland Private Limited is one of the leading indoor and outdoor industrial flooring product manufacturer and supplier, serving more than 25 years on engineered concrete floor flooring for various industries. He is also founder, member and president of Industrial Flooring Association. Let's all welcome uh, Sri Ajay Singham. Very good afternoon. First, I would like to thank Real Analysis and Ashokji for this wonderful platform and the opportunity to speak on this platform. This will be my first time speaking on uh, this kind of platform because we have been mostly in the industrial side or in the building side. This is the first time we will be speaking on a uh, sector which is new to us. So I will be covering a subject which is used by most all the stakeholders here present even Merino, uh, DMRC, Jindal, that's the floor. This is the platform on which the entire production, the entire innovation, the entire success story is resting. Because this is what is giving you the desired output, the production speeds, and how it performs is how it is your production will be uh, accelerated. So, I will be briefly introducing to you the three companies in which we are uh, catering to our different sectors. So like Avcon Technics in, been in this industry for almost three decades and what we do is we do complete design engineering of the concrete floor slabs. So when you are talking about any production line or you are talking about even uh, the railway stations, the wagon coach, factory or any element you have loads which are coming post-production, pre-production, during the construction. A lot of it is getting into the floor when you are designing. Unfortunately for us, we still in India don't have the design codes for designing the grade slabs. So what we are using is basically a conventional design uh, format which makes the design very, very either weak or it is very, very heavy, more than it is required. Internationally, there are many design norms uh, which caters a lot of elements uh, like you have, you know, point loads, the wheel loads, like you have a developed design in IRC for roads, but that's not the same which is happening on the great slab. So a lot of it that we are trying to drive through our platforms uh, through the association and educating the uh, stakeholders in this industry to adopt. Uh, so we have been in this for uh, three decades in Pan-India. We have been doing projects uh, right from automobile to uh, you talk about tire industry, uh, warehousings, name it, uh, chemical, everything. Uh, we have been there for a long time. Rockland is uh, one of the largest flooring group across the world and uh, they are present in over 22 countries and they have a very big uh, presence in Europe, Latin America, now US also. In Asia, we are there in India and we are catering to the Asian market and the African market from India. And what it does is it has a project division where we are collaborating in Avcon and we have a product divisions where we manufacture products in two of our plants. One is near Mumbai, another is in Vadodara. And uh, uh, that's where we are catering from India. And globally, there are many plants across the world. And there is a s product called uh, metallic joints, uh, which is manufactured in UK. And now we are started in India also. The third is the element which we are talking about in the last uh, speaker from Merino covered about the various locations where in the railways you have those aesthetics coming into play. So this is the company where we are catering to a lot of aesthetics and uh, we are doing most of the international corporate offices uh, in this segment. 
so like I said, the industry sector that we are catering to is uh, the manufacturing, be it any company, uh, any kind of product. And uh, it has many requirements right from the uh, performance parameters, uh, from the chemical parameters, the load parameters, wear resistance. You don't have a wear resistance which is same for all the industries, whether it is a plastic and heavy engineering. They both will have a different kind of wear resistance. And I know you all have seen uh, when you walk into any manufacturing sector, the first thing that you see is the floor because th that is one of the largest uh, floors on the surface area which is visible. And what do you see is always the joints or cracks or you're always seeing the broken joints or uh, worn out surfaces. You walk into 90% of the industries and you see this is the kind of uh, surface you will come across. Why do we have that kind of uh, surfaces? Do we need so many joints? Do we need all those uh, limitations? Do we have a way to mitigate those limitations? So these are the things that we do. We have systems wherein you have uh, less joints or jointless. You have some areas which are uh, seamless. We are doing a project in, uh, for a solar panel where we have something like 70,000 square meter without any joints, zero joints. So that kind of uh, design engineering are available and uh, it helps you in what you call the minimum maintenance or zero maintenance, virtual zero maintenance. Warehousing, warehousing is a sector which is built on two uh, parameters. One is a speculative model, some, some are in the uh, built to suit models. Speculative as of in India are very, very elementary in their design because it's a cost driven uh, area. But when it comes to BTS model, the requirements are very clear and uh, you always have a very good uh, specs and the, the design coming into play. So we are still waiting for the industry to grow up into that kind of requirement in speculative models as they have in international mo uh, you know, uh, speculative industries. Then we have this, of course, uh, institutional and commercial buildings. This is a very gray area. We still are uh, in a you know, project like uh, high-speed rails. Unfortunately, I'm sorry if I'm antagonizing someone here. We still have some specs which are 1977 CPWD specs on the floors. And we are talking about bullet trains. So it's uh, a very big conflict. Uh, so, and once it gets into specs, it's very difficult to change. So what are the options? What are the uh, ways in which it can be done? Do we always have to have a, you know, some kind of concrete coming over and above the slab? Can you not directly finish the slab? Can you not eliminate the volume of you know, uh, additional material you are putting because you are not able to do the first layer properly? There are many such things which can be done. The only thing is access to this knowledge, information, the companies who do it, and the uh, what you, inclination to change from the concept of uh, what you call DSR. I don't know uh, what, what, what are the platforms on which the tenders or specs are built, but uh, the time has come that you should change the specification or the model on which this is modeled. This is the new manufacturing kind of setups where you have robotics in play and uh, you have a kind of aesthetics in play. Robotics demand a certain kind of flatness. Pehle bolte the na ki floor mein aadha inch idhar udhar ho gaya chal jata hai. No, we are talking about less than an mm, one mm. That's the kind of tolerances we are looking at when we are talking about industry four and this kind of upgradation. The right side of the picture you will see is uh, a seamless one, what I was talking about, and this is white in color. This has been constructed in a cementitious stopping, which is an integral part of a concrete, nothing which is done after the concrete is done. So it's an integral part. After five years, you can just clean it, grind it, and again you have a new surface in place. So there is no repeated to line, uh, overcoating or additional expenditure incurred on that. Plus, it is giving you a very good lux level, improvement in the uh, lower consumption of power. So there are many such facets of uh, how you are going to spec 
and uh, conceive your floors. Here we are talking about those warehouses which are high specs. I am the last one, so I am the, having the least time, is it? <laughs> okay, no problems. So we are talking about uh, the warehouses, uh, like uh, which are as high as you know, my 45 meter height. What we are trying to do here is occupy not just the floor space. We are talking talking about occupying the entire volume, because nobody wants to waste that volume. Area is expensive. Why not go top? So this right hand side is 30 meters. So these are as high as 45 meters. The aisles are hardly one meter wide. Okay, the left one is a one uh, two meter maximum aisle. It's a VNA, very fast uh, loading and unloading segment. The right one is a dark warehouse, no power. It's an automated warehouse. Now the modern way of doing this is here you are doing a structure and then creating uh, racks and the warehouse. The another version is you directly put your racks on the floor and clad on the uh, rackings. So you eliminate the building structure. Pavements, which are very heavy duty for uh, or can be constructed rapidly with a large floor plates. We are talking about, uh, Mr. Sina covered about the subject. We need to improve the time of execution. This areas per day can be constructed 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 square meter per day. That is the speed of uh, construction. These are, of course, resin flows, which is uh, in the control rooms or all the ESD, what we talked about, electrostatic dissipatives. These are the offices, which are uh, seamless. Uh, this is terrazzo, cementitious, uh, low carbon footprint. This can be reused. If you are breaking it down, you can again use the broken element as the raw material. So virtually there is a zero wastage when you're talking about these products. A uh, lot of uh, shift is happening between the tiles to this because of less joints, easy to cl clean, anti-skid, and a different aesthetics. These are very minimalistic floors, which is very popular in Europe. And it's completely seamless. Uh, it's cementitious, available in all the colors. It can go over walls floors, ceilings, everywhere. The single texture can go everywhere. In Veda, we had these joints where, uh, which is taking care of the wheel movement in the impact. You have abrasion resistance class of toppings, which is uh, used for the wear and tear of such heavy uh, parts. You have chemicals to take care of the shrinkages. You have these structures uh, where you have a linear uh, floor construction and you tend to have a lot of cracks. I'll be showing you actual pictures. This is Atocha, which is uh, done by our partners. You can see uh, the left pictures, you have, you have a rail and this is the rail with a 60 meter stretch with no joints, no cracks. This is a completely jointless floors. Floors are designed for Excel. Usually the designer would take a UDL, a uniformly distributed load, which is not there. No transfers cracking. Wear resistance to meet the demands of the high wear and tear. These are the kind of joint protection systems which is taking care of the wheel impact. And uh, the straight joints will have a bit of impact when you travel across it, but it is protecting the edge. But where you don't want the impact to even happen, you will have wave kind of joint where you do not get the impact. You just transit as if you are on a floor without a joint. And the last one is the joint which is used for repairs and rehabilitation of a damaged joint. Again, these are the concourses internationally being done with the hardness that we manufacture here, available in various shades. This is the areas where uh, the terrazzos and the large such uh, spaces can be covered with minimum joints and uh, uh, easy to maintain kind of surfaces. Joints are the weakest and the dirtiest areas. So that's what we are trying to minimize. I talked about it. Thank you so much. <laughs>